We're in Chicago here at the production brewery for Goose Island. It's a pretty massive undertaking here. Uh, the, the first thing that happens when we get here, we're here for like 30 seconds. Tim brings us to this part of the brewery. This is the, the deck. The tap deck. The tap deck. And within maybe 45 seconds of our arriving, uh, Tim's pouring his samples. It's required. All guests need to start with a beer. So the beers that you have back there are kind of interesting. Yeah, we use the tap deck kind of as an opportunity to display like beers currently in the development phase um, or simply just beers we want to drink a lot of. Uh, we have the tap room downstairs that we can, can go down to any time. But, but, but some of that stuff won't be available at our favorite store or tavern for a while or, or ever, or ever yeah. maybe, depending on how things went. Um, one of the things that I tried, you walked me through this, it's a mead and it's a beer, it's called a bragger? A bragget. Bragget, explain that, yeah. because it was, first of all, the ABV was 15.2. That's how Tim got us started. Uh, <laughs> that, that, I've never heard of that, so it's mead and it's beer at the same time. Yeah, so the, the, the style, um, it's, it can be argued whether it's fermented together or blended separately. Uh, but Who's having that argument? Uh, beer, the beer nerds. Beer nerds, okay. Yeah. Uh, but basically, that was just a, a one-off. Um, I, I basically fermented out a mead with Britannomyces placenii, a wild yeast. Um, five years ago, and then three years ago, I put it to a barrel, um, an apple brandy barrel from our friends down the street at Ryan Hall Distillery. And then I blended it with uh, uh, Bourbon County wheat wine to kind of give it like a nice caramel foundation. So that beer took how long to make? Five years. It took me two seconds to drink it. It was so good. But that probably won't be something that you make a ton of because of You'll probably never work. see it. Yeah, well, I we'll can drink it all here. Dear viewer, I can share this with you. It was amazing. Can we take a look around the rest of the place? Yeah, definitely. All right, follow us. You've got a bunch of silos on the roof of this place. Yep. Kind of walk me through what's happening here. Yeah, so we have uh, four 50,000 pound silos that store our base malt or um, kind of our, our Munich malts. Um, and then we have a super sack station downstairs that house kind of the in-between between the, the 50 pound bag malt and uh, the silo, it's about 2,000 pounds. Um, and that's pretty much all the inputs for um, the malt materials that we use in beer. I understand why you have the, the silos up there, but getting the malt up there is not gonna be a lot of fun, right? No, we, we, get, them, we get it delivered by rail car, basically. Rail car? Yeah. No kidding? Yep. What's going on over here? What's, uh... um, these are called Imhoff cones, so we can actually see the settling of the whirlpool as is in a smaller vessel. So we can, we can tell how much of the proteins are precipitating, all the solids are precipitating, and what's going on in that vessel when, without having to look inside of it. So when you're looking at the proteins here at the bottom, you're able to tell what's going on at, yep. at what point it, at the development of, like how old is this beer? Where, what's, when was... Um, we, we can kind of tell like when, when it's a good time to cool in, but we, can, we also note this on our brew logs. Um, how well that is precipitating, whether we need to so down the road. the proteins are different in the two cones. Are those two different beers or? Um, it looks like they're different beers, okay. yeah. That's, and that could be protein, it could be hot material, it could be other precipitates that happen during the brewing process. Right on, the stuff yeah. that is delicious but is not gonna be in a can anytime soon. Yeah. If they're doing what they're supposed to do. And I think you'll find they know what they're doing here. <laughs> this system's been here since 1996. Um, it's had a few tack-ons. The Whirlpool, or the uh, wort receiver is relatively new. Um, we've also had a larger silo put in, and then we tied the whole brewing process in with a mash filter. So it kind of takes the place of the water ton, and basically it's a giant rectangular vessel with a series of plates that we use to uh, draw off the wort. We'll see that in a little bit. So the 1996 is when this facility was 95, opened. 95, 96. 95, 96. Okay, so walk me through this. 88 is when the original Goose Island Brew Pub opens on, on Clybourne, right? Correct. And you're just making the beer there? Where were they making the beer back then? Um, it was just there. Just un there. Until 95. And yep. then they decide, okay, this, this seems to go other places. And then that's yep. how this happened here? Exactly. Amazing. Okay, what's next? Uh, we can walk down into the cellar if you want. Down into the cellar? Oh, okay. We gotta go through the tap room. Yeah, let's do it.
this wall is kind of cool. Uh, this maps, this kind of iconizes the uh, the map of where we get all our raw materials. Right on. Uh, wine barrels, our hops, um, where the brewery is, our bourbon barrels from Kentucky, um, the fruit from Michigan, um, coffee from Africa and Costa Rica um, and Brazil. I mean, it's worth pointing out that we're here in Chicago at the production facility, but Goose Island is available in all 50 states. It's available all over the world, yep. right? And not every Goose Island beer that you drink is made here at this facility. You've sure. got how many different breweries? Uh, we have eight brew pubs, and then we're brewing at probably around 10 production facilities around the globe now. So is this the biggest, or it probably isn't the biggest? This isn't the biggest. But it's the first. Yes. And that's why we're here. Okay, so this is the part where when we open the door, you'll be hearing uh, angel music because holy cow, we're in heaven. Check this out. 